Hello, hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? I am so excited. Finally, finally, we are launching Tea with Pastor P. Somebody make some noise. <laughs> okay, so you guys, before we get started, go ahead and start sharing this broadcast. Start tagging somebody text somebody, let them know, hey, Tea with Pastor P is live on YouTube, which y'all can also do. You can copy the link and you can start sharing it with all your friends and all your loved ones. Hey, you already know what time it is. It's tea time. So whilst we wait for them to go ahead and come on, I need y'all to grab your tea, your scones, your biscuits, your crackers, your cookies, whatever it is that you are going to be indulging in today as we spill the tea, <laughs> the holy tea, of course. Go ahead and grab that and let's get started. Now that's some good tea, okay? <laughs> that is some good tea. You guys, I've been so excited. You guys, I've just been counting down and looking forward to it. But first of all, before we get into today's tea, um, I need to make a quick confession. Now this series should have been started. Um, we had already shot like 15 episodes and the episodes were already edited for the official lunch date. You guys, I'm telling you. So during production, we had a glitch with our system and every episode that we shot got deleted. You guys, it pained my soul. Like you have no idea how much goes into shooting an episode, preparing makeup, hair, wardrobe, and then the editing process itself. You guys, I was so hurt, okay? I was so hurt. So y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me for real. But yeah, so that's what took this series so long for us to air because uh, the journey has been rough. The enemy did not want you guys to hear some of these things that we get ready to put out for y'all. But listen, whether he likes it or not, we're putting it out. Y'all will hear it. Our lives will be transformed. We will grow together. We will, you know, get to our next level in this journey. But anyways, that's just by the way. Okay. So you guys, I want y'all to get excited. Okay. So Tea with Pastor P is going to be every Tuesdays. Um, this is a YouTube original, YouTube exclusive, so nobody else is going to share in it. <laughs> so speaking of that, if you haven't already done so, if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button and then also hit the notification bell because what the notification bell does is that it notifies you whenever we go live, whenever it's tea time, um, so guys, so that you guys will not miss out, you know, on tea time. You don't want to miss it. It's so much fun. I feel like it's so much better to watch it live, but the replay is also pretty lit as well. So what you guys have to look forward to with tea time, I'm going to be having special guests. We're going to be doing different mentoring sessions sometimes. I'm going to speak on different topics some days. Maybe some days we'll just come on and pray together as a family, as a YouTube family. It's going to be amazing and I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Okay, so yeah, let's get started. So I was thinking for today's tea time, I was like, what is the first thing that I want to open up the series with, right? What what should I talk about? What tea should I spill with my family? You know, with Team PFN, okay? Um, and so I thought it would be really great for me to begin with 10 lessons, well, seven lessons that 2020 taught me. Okay. Seven lessons that 2020 taught me. You guys, one thing we have to agree is that last year took us on one big roller coaster. Okay. <laughs> 2020, we could all admit that we went on quite, quite a bit of a, a roller coaster, whether it was emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, we were on some kind of ride. And I don't know about y'all, but it just felt super long. But there are a lot of people that are saying, man, I couldn't wait for 2020 to be over. 2020 was by far the worst year ever. 
But I feel like one thing that we're forgetting and I feel like one thing that we have to pause and take a look at is that even in the midst of that whirlwind, even in the midst of what seemed like a chaotic year, even in the midst of what seemed so tragic, um, a lot of losses went on, a lot of sicknesses took place, a lot of um, coming to a halt for the whole world, you know, took place. But even in the midst of that, there were valuable lessons that I personally believe that if we just pause, right? And if we just pause and we just evaluate, you will see that there's so much valuable life lessons that 2020 really taught some of us. So today for the first episode, I want to share with you all seven life lessons that 2020 taught me. So let's go ahead and get started. So lesson number one that 2020 taught me was the power of prayer, the power of prayer. And and mind you, this is the lessons that I learned personally. Some of these you might not agree with me on. That's fine. You have the lessons that you learned, but these are the lessons that I learned that I wanted you to just, I wanted to share with y'all and I wanted you to also ponder on. And I'm pretty sure some of this will definitely resonate with you as well. So the first thing that 2020 taught me was the power of prayer. You guys, last year was so crazy, but last year was the one year that I found myself really, really in like, prayer mode. Last year, I prayed so much. I believe that last year, the way that I prayed, I haven't prayed that way my whole life, honestly speaking. Like the scripture that says pray without season, last year I got to experience, like I got to basically live that scripture. Like I was praying every moment of the day, every minute of the day, whether I'm riding somewhere, whether I'm just in the house with my family, going to work, whatever was shooting an episode for you guys or preparing, whatever it was, I was in prayer mode. And I'm so, so, so grateful for my church family, Vintage Grounds Church. We stood, we stood as pillars in our city in Columbus, in Ohio. We stood and we prayed fervently and we prayed honestly. And personally speaking, nobody can convince me otherwise. I personally believe that it was our prayers that kept us for last year. I mean, you can disagree if you want to, but personally speaking, prayer kept me. Prayer kept my family. Prayer kept my church family. Prayer kept my community. Prayer kept me. So there is power in prayer because what we don't know is that when we are engaging in prayer, that could be a whole nother episode. But when we are engaging in prayer, what we're basically doing is that we're giving God and the heavenly host the permission to intervene, the permission to act on our behalf. Because sometimes God is not just going to just do things. We have to grant him the permission. We have to invite him into our situations. And last year, I did not take a breath or take a step or go anywhere without invoking the power of prayer. And I tell to you, not, I, I lie to you not by the grace of God. I'm well, my brother is well, my father is well. So many people lost family members. So many people lost loved ones. I almost lost my dad, but prayer was raised. Um, to the point where COVID got my dad and it was so bad. He was on life support, hospitalized, but my whole church family, we stood, we conducted a 24 hour prayer. Like we were praying round the clock and the same people and certain people found themselves in the same situation that my father did, but today they're dead, but my father is still alive with us well, doing things on his own again. Somebody cannot tell me that that was not prayer, prayer really, really, I got to learn that prayer is really key. Okay. This some good tea, y'all. <laughs> okay. Life lesson number two that 2020 taught me is the importance of having a personal relationship with God, a personal relationship with God. So many people fell out in their faith. We had pastors, we had ministers, we had church folks that committed suicide last year, church folks that gave up on their faith and their belief and their trust in God. And personally, for me, it all goes back to the foundations of not having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Different people go to church for different reasons, okay? But I believe that when the true reason why you go to church is about God himself, it's about God the Father, yes, certain things may shake your foundations, but it will not cause you to abandon your faith. It will not cause you to throw in the towel. Even when you get to encounter different personalities in the churches, when somebody may give you an attitude, maybe, 
uh, when you encounter maybe a false prophet or a false pastor or whatever, you don't just walk away from your faith. You don't just walk away from God because you have that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with God for yourself, right? For yourself. So I got to learn that, you know what, at the end of the day, God is everything to me. I got to draw closer to him. I got to grow in my walk with him. There were moments where nobody could tell me anything. There was no comforting words. There was no words of encouragement that, that nobody could tell me that I was buying into, but it was those moments that I spent Spent with God one on one, crying to Him, opening my heart to Him, telling Him, God, please comfort me. God, save my father. Lord, I need you. I don't know what to do right now. Lord, you know, strengthen my faith and stuff like that. And me actually feeling His presence and feeling His warm embrace and hearing just the Holy Spirit dropping encouraging things to me really, really helped me through my 2020. So, 2020, I learned that having a personal relationship with God is key. Know God for yourself. When you know God for yourself, when you have a personal relationship with God for yourself, you're not easily moved. You're not easily interrupted. You're not easily, you know, you're not too easy or too quick to abandon your faith. Third lesson that 2020 taught me is that family is important. Family is important. These are my personal lessons that I'm sharing with y'all. Listen, at the end of the day, the world came to a standstill. We can go nowhere. We can go to work. A lot of us had to work remotely. We can go to the movies. We can go on vacation. We can we we can go to the even the park. You some of us couldn't even step outside of our doors. I know some of y'all in different countries. I know the UK was super strict, like London was super strict, and I know some other nations were super strict. So you couldn't even like do anything. There were no friends. There were no neighbors. There were no co-workers. All you had for months, some of us for years, was family. You were in the house. You were in close quarters with family. And for me, I'm like, I can love all my friends. I can appreciate my neighbors. I can appreciate my coworkers. But after all is said and done, at the end of the day, for me personally, family is what you're going to have there with you. You know, when, when, when COVID happened and the lockdown happened, everybody was concerned for their loved ones and their friends and stuff. But I strongly believe that people were more concerned for their immediate family members, where certain members didn't even leave the house because they wanted to protect their family. They didn't want to leave the house to go um, get COVID and bring it back home or anything like that because they were so conscious to protect their children, to protect their some of them, their elderly parents, to protect their siblings. So I got to learn that, man, yeah, my friends will be there with me. Yeah, you might go out, turn up, party with your friends and all that stuff. Your coworkers might be there, give you a right to work here and there, you know, and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, family is what we got. Family is what we got. And can't nobody tell me otherwise. So, so 2020, I got to learn that family is everything. Family is important. Okay. Life lesson number four. And remember we're talking, I'm sharing seven lessons, you know, life lessons that 2020 taught me. Okay. So the fourth thing that 2020 taught me was to celebrate people while they are still alive. Celebrate people while they're still alive. Listen, last year you could have spoken to somebody on the phone an hour later, two hours later, or you go to sleep and the next day they're dead. They're gone. Somebody could be taken to the hospital today. And then by the evening, in the morning, then by the evening, they're dead, gone. Listen, some of us, we take people for granted. People that are impacting our lives, people that are impacting our communities, people that are making a difference in our churches and our homes. You know, that young lady that is striving her best, you know, to just be, you know, a good role model, to make an impact. That young man that goes out of his way to show y'all kindness in that community, in that neighborhood, or that preacher that you love so much, your pastor, you know, or your, your teacher at schools, parents got to realize just how important teachers are. Those eight hours that they're taking care of your children, parents got to realize just how valuable those eight hours are. And, 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 and so learn to celebrate people while they're still alive. Don't wait till somebody is dead 
Now you're standing by the graveside with a bouquet of flowers and you're saying, man, you really impacted my life. Or you're printing out t-shirts or you're posting long paragraphs on your social media talking about that was my brother. That was my sister. They had my back. They was there. And mind you, while they were alive, you never said any of these things to them. You never told them how much they meant to you. There are so many of you today that lost loved ones last year in 2020 that you wished, man, if I can only get two minutes with her, if I can only get two minutes with him to tell him how much I appreciated everything he was doing, how much I appreciated everything she did, how much I appreciated. Take me for example, her Monday motivations or her, her tea with Pastor P or her made for more conferences. Celebrate people while they, whilst they are alive. You know, a lot of us, I don't know, maybe it's pride or I don't know whether we take people for granted or not. You never know. You never know when that person is not going to be anymore. Some of you, you sit there and you think, man, I got time. We're still young. I'll get, you know, eventually, you know, I'll let her know. Or some of you, you say, oh, she knows I appreciate her or he knows I, I appreciate her. Or she knows, you know, she means a lot to me or she knows. No, don't assume let the people know. If you appreciate them, tell them I appreciate you. Tell them I celebrate you. Tell them, hey, Quinn, I see your grind. Hey, King, I see you out here busting tail. I see you out here doing what you're doing. Yes, I applaud you. Keep pushing. Sometimes that alone goes a long way. It means so much to those individuals. You never really would know how much those words would mean. So I learned that they might be here today and gone tomorrow. So celebrate them while you can, while they're alive. Because that bouquet that you're going to take to the grave site, reality check, it's not going to matter. It's not. Because they're no longer there. Their body may be there, but their soul and their spirit is gone. You know, the, the wine, the champagne that you're going to pop at the grave site and pour one for the dead homies and all of that, it's not going to matter because they're not there. They're gone. Reality check. They're gone. They gone. They gone. Their spirit have left the body. So yeah, we do all of that because it's tradition. We pour one for the dead homies and all that stuff, but they're not there. They're gone. Celebrate them while they're here. Tell them you love them while they're there. Tell them you appreciate their grind, their hard work while they're here. Let them know whilst they're still alive. Okay. Lesson number five, right, that I learned from 2020 is forgive forgive, learn to forgive. A lot of us, we can hold on to grudges like our lives depended on it. We can hold on to situations. We can hold on to things like our lives depend on it. Listen, y'all, I'm not even kidding. This is some good tea. <laughs> but listen, listen, all jokes aside, okay? Learn to forgive. You never know. Some of us, buried a lot of people last year that you yourself, you stood there, you're thinking, wait, what was I mad about? Why haven't we spoken in the past three years? Was was that fight even even worth it? Was was the 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 grudge that I held on to for all these years that I couldn't forgive them, was it really worth it? I thought I had more time to make amends. I thought I had more time, you know, to forgive them, to make up with them. Oh, they really hurt me. So I'm going to be petty by not forgiving them and holding on to them. That's my way of punishing them. No, you're not punishing them. You're punishing yourself. So today we have a lot of people that are living with regrets because they wish they had just told that individual, man, I'm not really all that mad at you. I don't even know why we were fighting. I forgive you. I wasn't really all that upset anymore, but you don't get that opportunity anymore because they're dead. So I want to encourage us, learn to forgive. And one thing I always say is that as cliche as this may sound, the forgiveness, honestly, a lot of the times it's not even for them. The people that hurt you, the people that did you wrong, the people that turned their backs on you, the people that molested you, assaulted you, abused you. A lot of the times it's not even for them. That boyfriend, that husband that cheated on you, that gave you that divorce. Sometimes it's not even for them. The forgiveness a lot of the times is for you. So let's learn to forgive. Okay, let's learn to forgive because you don't want to carry all those, the hatred, the grudge, the unforgiveness to the grave. For what? So you can end up in hell with Satan. Don't allow anybody to cost you your eternity. Don't allow anybody to cost you heaven. Don't allow anybody to send you to hell because you just 
You just couldn't forgive them. You just couldn't let it go. You just couldn't surpass it. I get it. What happened to you shouldn't have happened. What they did, they shouldn't have done it. You didn't deserve it. It wasn't your fault. I get it. I get it, sis. I do. I get it, bro. I honestly get it. Some of you, you know some of my testimony. And for those of you who don't, if I start to share my testimony today, we're not going to live. Leave this episode, this tea time, okay? We'll be here sipping on tea all day long. But what I'm saying is that even though it's not your fault, even though you didn't deserve it, even though they don't deserve your forgiveness, it's not about them. It's not about that. Just, I want to encourage you all to just learn to forgive, okay? We're almost done, okay? Hang in there. We're almost done. <laughs> Lesson number six that 2020 taught me, okay? Lesson number six that 2020 taught me. 2020 taught me that health is wealth. Health is wealth. A lot of the people that died, a lot of them had underlined in health conditions, right? A lot of them had weak immune systems. A lot of them were already battling with other things and then some way, somehow, COVID, corona, find its way into their system. So I learned that I've got to take better care of myself, right? I learned that I got to start exercising more, a little more, because I always tell you guys that ever since I got out of the military, I fell off. And the military used to work out twice a day. And I got out of the military. Sometimes I don't work out for weeks, which is not good. So 2020 reminded me that, hey, you have to be intentional. You have to be, you, you've got to be intentional about your health. You've got to be intentional, not only about your physical health, also your mental health as well, psychologically, spiritually, holistically. You have to take care of yourself, working out, eating right, taking your vitamins, y'all. I started taking vitamins, okay? <laughs> Holla at your girl. But I started taking vitamins. It's so important. It's just so important. Um, and then drinking water, that's one thing I struggled with. OK, it's been a struggle, but I must admit, you know, I must be honest with y'all. I'm doing a lot better. OK, I'm more intentional now about now about drinking my water, but just taking care of yourself, taking your your immune medications, your um, your vitamins, drinking water, exercising, eating right. Please take care of yourself, because sadly, we lost so many people last year because some of them, their immune system couldn't take it. Some of them, they had underlined in health conditions. I mean, we lost so many of our loved ones last year because of health issues. So please be intentional about your health because we saw as rich people died. And these are rich people that could have afforded um, a whole hospital, you know, the, the whole staff of an entire Mount Carmel Hospital, if they wanted to, to so just focus just specifically on them, but that still could not save them because the health wasn't there, you know? So please take care of your health, take care of yourself, take care of your body, take care of your mental state, your mental health, take care of you. We, Some of us, we give so much. Some of us, we're so busy with everybody. Some of us, we're always everywhere that we neglect ourselves. And this goes to my young people as well. Don't, don't be, don't be um, what you calling it? taking like 50 shots a day, that's not good for your liver. Don't be out here smoking and, and, and getting, you know, high to the point where you're not like conscious of yourself anymore. What you don't know that some of these things that you're smoking on, some of these things that you're drinking, it's causing side effects to your body. It's breaking down different parts, different organs, different vital places in your body that you are not, you may not be conscious of. Right now you're doing it and you're thinking it's cool and all that stuff, but think about the long-term effects. What damages are you doing to yourself? What damages are you doing to your body? I don't know about y'all, but I want to live long. So for all my young folks having tea with me, please, when you are out there doing things, and I'm not ignorant, you know, I mean, I'm young. I'm here. I mean, I'm past the P, but I'm young. I know you all are out here indulging in certain things and the drinking and all that stuff, which I don't encourage. I don't condone it. I'm not for it. Um, but take care of your bodies. Take care of yourself. Take care of your health. Health is wealth, okay? And the last thing I want to share with you all today, number seven that 2020 taught me, 2020 taught me humility, humility. Humble yourself. 
okay <laughs> humble yourself listen no condition is permanent no condition is permanent so many people lost businesses uh like a lot of huge corporations and stores that we've known for years and for decades they got shut down people became homeless people lost their homes their homes got foreclosed you know and all of that people lost money people lost investments people lost thousands and hundreds of thousands and billions of dollars so you might have it all today you don't know about tomorrow humble yourself don't walk around with your nose in the air looking down at people don't walk around treating people like they're all beneath you even if they are respect people they're still humans okay you may have it all today but you never know that person that you're treating badly that person that you're looking down on that person that you're cursing at that might be your helper tomorrow you never know let's take on the spirit of humility let's take on the spirit of servanthood let's be kind to people sometimes it's not even anything that you would say to somebody but it's just the way that you look at people the way that um you smile your body language your facial gestures um excuse me your facial gestures the way you interact with people humble yourself because you don't know you might be here today and you might be gone tomorrow or the same people that you know you you walked all over you ignored you treated badly those are going to be the same people when you need shelter that the lord might use to shelter you life can be unpredictable life can be unpredictable i know what it's like to have and have an abundance i i've also experienced in my lifetime what it means to be homeless and to not have to go to bed hungry to go to bed in tears to go to bed wishing and praying for a miracle, you know? So I've experienced both sides of the spectrum. And so today, as you're having tea with me, I just wanna encourage you to please be humble. Be humble in everything that you do in life, as you go places, as you interact with people, humility is key, okay? So these are seven things that 2020, taught me and i just felt you know what let me come on and share with team pfn share with my people share with my family members <laughs> with my loved ones i love y'all so much please if you have enjoyed this tea time with me today please don't forget to hit the like button that's the thumbs up button at the end at the bottom of this video also don't forget to subscribe please let's help grow the channel share this with somebody that you love that you care about um and then also hit that notification bell i'm so excited you could join me today for tea time i can't wait to connect with you with our next episode god willing i'm princess fauna aka pastor p this is tea with pastor p tuesdays only on youtube on the princess fauna network love you guys god bless you until next tuesday bye